Hi, I'm George Cow, and today I'm here with one of my clients, Sharon Rosen. Excited for uh, her to be sharing some tips about self-care. And let me, uh, first of all, let me say hello. Hi, Sharon. Hey, George. How are you? Thanks for being here. Yeah, it's great to be with you. Yeah, so I'm going to have Sharon uh, tell us about her, in terms of her, her business, what she's learned in her journey of growing her business, and also be sharing some self-care tips with us. So those, this will be great. Let me begin actually by giving some context with uh, reading her bio to you all so that you can know what she's, what she works on. So Sharon works with smart, accomplished, spiritually attuned women who, despite all they know and all they've done, they still find it hard to allow their inner wisdom to be their most reliable ally. That's true for Men, too, sometimes. Yeah, um, absolutely. So if you go to her website, you can get a free audio uh, called The Deep Rest Guided Meditation. And you'll also get inspiring, useful information through her Inner Wisdom newsletter. And her website is heartofselfcare.com, www.heartofselfcare.com. So Sharon, let's begin, uh, given that most watching this are building a business of some kind, let's begin mm -hmm. with some of the things you've learned as you've grown your business. Um, and you know, you sent me a few notes before this and you mentioned one of the things was about your um, intrinsic, like getting to know the intrinsic parts of who you are. So tell us a bit about that. Yeah, well, for the first part of my career, the first 25 years, I was a massage therapist, which you would think that, I mean, obviously people came to me because I was good at what I did with my hands, but I also really understood pretty quickly that people were coming to me also because of me, because of how I received them, how I spoke with them, how I responded to them. Um, you know, because there are other people who are good with their hands, but their energy, their way of being isn't necessarily going to resonate. So um, I had a really successful practice for 25 years, and then I started to shift my focus. I was always bringing other things into my massage work and offering other things. Then I started putting massage in the background and leading with more coaching, more teaching, more spiritual healing and counseling. And I, I, I somehow, by... Um, listening to different marketing people, uh, trying to follow some business coaches, because I felt like my practice just happened. You know, it just magically happened. And now I felt like I was needing to build this other thing. And plus the online world was going to be a part of it. And I was telling myself a lot that I didn't know how to do this. And it took a really long time and a lot of confusion of, you know, going down a bunch of rabbit holes or listening to ideas and um, teachings that weren't necessarily right for me, right? Everybody's out there saying, you know, you need to do a podcast and you need to be on LinkedIn and Facebook and Instagram and you need to be really good at, you know, SEO. And, you know, my head was spinning and I just, I kind of, around when I started listening to you actually, um, and following you on Facebook, I, I really just said, this is making me crazy. I'm not working enough. I'm not helping people. And it's not about that I'm going to, you know, looking to be some big six, seven figure coach, you know, with this high visibility. I just want to help people. I want to work again more than I was. And um, so I started to kind of, I think of it as resting back into myself my natural knowing, being less nervous about the what am I saying when I go to a networking event or when I show up on Facebook to either write something or do a live and just let my natural warmth and friendliness and care for other people's well-being come through. And it <laughs> feels a whole lot better and it's working better. It's brilliant. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. There is a genius within within each of us um, yeah. that is different, you know? I mean, that's the, part of the beauty of the world is how different each of us are. And uh, when we are, just like you said, willing to reconnect with that intrinsic part of who we are and allow that to be expressed in our yeah. business, 
we can't help but be unique and we can't help but attract the, the right kind of people to us who are meant for us. And so thank you for, for mentioning that your, your uh, just willingness to express your soul essentially. Mm. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. um, and so another thing that you have been learning is about kind of keeping things simple. Um, talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um... Yeah, I really did um, get a little too caught up in a lot of the, the rhetoric and the conversation around um, all of the things that you're supposed to do to have a really successful business. And so I was always like jumping off into different areas and not just standing still, or not standing still, but standing firm in one place and actually giving that one place, whatever that was, focusing on Facebook, focusing on in-person networking, finding the right networking groups, because some didn't feel like a great fit for me, others were, and showing up consistently and, and kind of staying the course and letting that guide my marketing, as you say, right? fly the paper airplanes, like try things, show up, speak, like don't sit here in my office or behind my computer trying to come up with these perfect, amazing marketing words that as soon as people read them, they're going to want to work with me and, and try certain things and stay the course for a while so that I can get the feedback on whether it's working or not and then switch things up. Yeah. yeah. No, that's exactly yeah. right. <laughs> lovely. Lovely. Yeah. It's not, it's, it's, this, it's simpler, but also it's uh, liberating yourself from the, from the judgments yeah. uh, and the perfectionism and the paper mm -hmm. airplane analogy. I, I of course, I, I love that. And for those who haven't heard that or to me talk about the paper airplane thing, it's the idea that um, marketing and business is about a series of tossing a paper airplane and seeing where it goes and just like the paper airplane a lot of times it kind of goes like this right and then <laughs> right. we it back up we tweak the nose we tweak the wings a little bit and we try it again uh yeah. you know every time we learn something oh it's interesting it's going a little bit to the left oh it's going to a little bit to the right let me let me tweak the wing a little bit this way rather than thinking oh my god i have one we'll have one toss and that's it <laughs> oh, right no. Toss as many times as you want. Get another piece of paper. But that's true of us. Yeah. We, we have this unlimited resource within us of our ideas, energy, creativity. Um, mm -hmm. If we only uh, kept up with our self-care, you know, it's, it's really unlimited yeah. within us. Yeah. And also, I, for me, the, that paper airplane thing, it helped, me take, it helped me hold it all more lightly when things didn't fly. Right. I yes. didn't feel like, oh my God, I really screwed up. I don't know how to do this. I better find another program coach, you know, uh, you know, buy another, you know, online course. <laughs> right. And it was just like, okay, I tried that thing. Now I have information to, you know, to move forward with. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> For me, it's kind of like, huh. <laughs> like that's the, that's the reaction. Huh. Yeah. When I have that happen. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh, what, what yeah, can I, I, do? I thought that was really going to be great. Okay, I'm I not getting know. a response. So yeah. I guess, I guess uh, I'm ahead of my time. <laughs> <laughs> and there you go. <laughs> it's, it's true, actually. Yeah, you're ahead of your time. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, another uh, lesson you you were been learning is about um, the fees that you're charging and mm -hmm. what that means for the value of your work. And you know, talk about your perspective on that. Yeah. Oh boy. That, that's been a, a, you know, it's always an interesting thing. Like when with massage, you know, there's kind of a going rate. And the fact that I'd been doing it for 25 years and somebody else just came out of school, you know, there wasn't a lot of room for, you know, this mastery level. So, you know, but I was making a comfortable living. So that was fine. Then, you, you know, you get into the coaching world and the teaching world and it's a whole other thing. And because there is so much of that rhetoric and not that I, ever had a great aspiration to be a six figure seven figure coach sure it sounds good i'd love to make a hundred thousand plus a year wouldn't that be nice we could travel more my husband could relax yeah i'm also i one of the things i realized about myself quite honestly is i am not that ambitious and i don't mean that in a bad way it's like i just want to do what i do and help people and make a comfortable living 
I say make enough and then some, you know? I want to be able to take some vacations. Sure, I want to be able to do some things and, you know, not feel like it's going to blow me out of the water financially. But I, I, this whole thing about charging what you're worth and that the more money you ask for and get says anything about who I am as a person and what my value in the world is. I, you know, I've taught meditation classes where one person showed up and they paid me $5. And we had a great session. And I've taught classes where they brought me in, there were a few people, and they paid me $150 for the hour. Beautiful. That's all, you know, it's all good. I, I wouldn't be able to do everything for $5 an hour. That's not sustainable, but it, I like that. I actually like the fluctuations because it feels more realistic to me than if you can't pay me this much, I can't help you or there's something wrong with you, you need to work with your money mindset. It's like, my money mindset's fine. It took me a while to actually believe that because so many people are talking about, like, if you're not charging these great fees, then you have to look at your inner, it's like, oh my God, I'm fine with money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thank yeah. you for saying <laughs> it, It's this insidious idea. Um, I mean, it sounds good at the surface. Of course we want people to value us more or, or to value right. themselves more, uh, mm -hmm. maybe. Um, it sounds good, but then right. as we start to look into it and dig into it, we realize the foundation of that idea is that somehow money equals human worth. Yeah. Or the worth of, or the value of work, which is really dangerous because that means, well, that means I guess the one percenters in our society are somehow better people and they're doing more valuable work Versus the single mother, you know, right? right? Who is working, I mean, or any of us who, who do, who, who care with our hearts for other people, or if it's not charging enough, then somehow that, that, that work is not valuable. Yeah. And so thank you. It's, it's, it, you're seeing the beauty and the fulfillment and the experiences you're, that you're having. Yeah. Um, and, and, and yes, of course, we also have to look at what is financially sustainable. Well, I have to, right, I have to live in the world. Yeah. But if I really want to work with somebody, if, if I feel a, a, a resonance and a connection and I can help them and they feel that I can help them and money's an issue, let's talk. Let's not let money be the issue that keeps you from getting the support that would help you move to a different way of being in yourself. That's beautiful. That's what's more important. That's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, well, let's shift gears a bit and okay. talk about, well, your area of expertise, self-care and everything that's related to that. Um, is there something that you would love to share, some, some tip or some exercise that uh, you find that clients find helpful, your audience finds helpful that maybe you can share in this, in this uh, video as well? Sure. Uh, from what I have experienced and what I've learned, the most important thing, you know, we live so much in our heads these days, right? We're in our heads, we're in our eyes, everything's like going out, but we're not really co connecting with the outside world in a, in a wholesome, holistic way. So one of the best things to do, like when you're feeling really like you're spinning out, first, just stop, like literally stop. If you have to close your laptop, if you have to, I tend to, my thing these days is I put the phone screen down. I don't want to see if a notification comes up, right? I put that aside and orient to your physical being. So literally like feel where you're being supported by the chair, feel the contact of your body, feel the floor if your feet aren't on the floor. Get your feet on the floor. Feel yourself being supported that way. So really get into your body. Start to feel literally the, the physical sensation of breathing. Different than thinking about breathing or doing a breathing exercise. Just notice how breath is happening in your body in this moment and literally feel. It's also, I find, really nice. I don't think people can see, but if you put one hand on your chest and one hand on your abdomen, a lot of people's breathing is very tight and shallow and we don't 
expand and express and inhale and exhale. So to really feel that. And then another good thing to do is look around and like get out of your head and connect with, I mean, like so many people I have, you know, I have stones and I have little statues and I have things around me. I have a window, a beautiful, you know, green woods outside of my window. Stop and literally like take in what's around you. Really, you know, sometimes when things are in your environment, you don't even see them anymore. And then also, you know, what are you smelling? You know, is there still a hint of coffee in your mug or your tea or whatever? Um, you know, something from the last meal that you cooked or for me, I put on an essential oil before we spoke. So, so really anything where you just kind of stop and tune into your senses is a really great kind of instant come back to yourself, self-care tool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful and so simple. It's, uh, it's, <laughs> yeah, the simple things about. really work if you do them, yeah. right? Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Yeah. Um, so you have, um, you have several offerings in your business, and I'd love to start talking about that. Mm -hmm. um, you work one-to-one -one with clients. Yes. Yeah. And then you also have a group program. Um, let's start with your one-to-one. -one. What, kind of, what kind of work do you do one-to-one -one with clients? Well, one-to-one -one is, um, right now I'm calling it, <laughs> it's, it's, I was looking for a very simple, short, elegant um, title, but uh, somebody that is an ideal client for me resonated with the, you know, make your inner wisdom your most reliable ally. And it's interesting because, you know, there's a saying that, you know, that there's a resonance, like, you know, what you've worked on in yourself is usually what you can most help people with. And it was like, ding, 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 ding. That was really also, that's been, you know, one of my biggest areas of growth and focus and learning, relearning. <laughs> um, and so that's a 12 week program. And that could take, you know, from three to four months, depending on if we meet every week or, you know, sometimes as you're working with people, it's nice to spread things out a little bit more as people are starting to really chew on what they've been learning and experiencing. Um, so that is my one-on-one -on -one work. Um, I'm not doing any groups myself at the moment, but I am doing a group with my friend and colleague, Sue Carney, called Reclaim Resilience. And um, that's set to launch next week. And um, that's really going to be a great group experience of, again, learning how to trust our own inner knowing our own inner resilience and how to build that more so that we can more easily access it when you know we all have times when if we just you can't even connect to what you know you need or what you know is true and so it helps to have tools and techniques and pathways and those are the things that we'll be doing in that program mm, yeah it's wonderful and so if uh, those of watching this if you're if, if you're curious about either option of working with Sharon, please do contact her. She's very approachable. And I'll be sure to put um, your website, of course, Sharon, in the, yeah. in the notes of the video. It's www.heartofselfcare.com. And you're also on Facebook. And so I I'll am. The, I'm on, yeah, I'm on page. Facebook. Uh, I do a lot on Facebook. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's, you know, my email is Sharon at heartofselfcare.com. And I really you know, no pressure. I love just connecting with people and helping them if I'm not the person, but there's a resource that I am aware of that would be of support to you right now, then I would be happy to share that. So I really do love connecting with people. That's whoever, whoever thought that my, my five-year-old just like la 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 going around, you know, being so friendly with, with everybody I encounter would be, you know, one of your um, strengths. One yeah, of one my of your, strengths one of as, as an adult, yeah. but it's it's true. I have that just this natural way of I make friends everywhere I go, and it's a it's a blessing. And so uh, you know, I like to bring that into to how I encounter you know anybody who might even be a potential client. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Thank you, Sharon, so much. Um, is there anything you want to say as we end? Is there another another self care idea or tip you want to share as we complete this uh, this interview? Hmm. Um, I think, you know, for me, along with that 
stopping, pausing, connecting to all your senses. Also, I mean, it's, again, as simple as it sounds, when you're having a really hard time, when you're struggling and you're saying not nice things to yourself, when you catch yourself, really to just put your hands on your heart and go, oh, oh, you're really having a rough day. Like, it's okay. It's okay, sweetheart. You're having a rough day. And to just acknowledge that because we're not often gentle and kind with ourselves. And when things aren't going right or we forget something, you know, we just kind of say nasty things to ourselves. So I think anytime you can catch yourself and offer yourself the same kindness and compassion that you would to your friend if she said, oh, I'm so stupid, I can't believe. Like, wait, don't say that about yourself. Like, okay, don't say that about yourself. <laughs> shift, you know, shift your self-talk a little bit. Yeah. That's great. That's what a great reminder. Thank you for that. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, George. So, yeah. Thanks for doing this. And uh, those watching, if you've resonated with Sharon's energy and wisdom, reach out to her, you know, and uh, consider working with her in her one-on-one or in her upcoming group program. So thanks, Sharon. Yeah. Thanks, thanks George. <laughs>